Hello there. I am Robert E. Lee, and this is my Draw My Life. I was born in Westmoreland County, Virginia, on January 19, 1807. I was the son of Major General Henry Lee III, also known as Light Horse Harry. At one point, he was the governor of Virginia. My mother was a lovely lady who goes by Anne Hill Carter. There she is right there, and there's my father. <sighs> and there I am, so cute. At age two, in 1809, two years after my birth, my father went to debtor's prison. Then, after he got out, we moved to Alexandria, Virginia in 1811. We moved to a small house with my five siblings. There's my dad, my mom, me, and my five siblings. I went to a church as a child, but... Oh, excuse me. In 1812, in Baltimore, my dad was shot in a political riot. Due to math medical issues, he did travel to the West Indies after that. Sadly, he never come, came home, and he never saw me again. He passed away there. As a child, I did go to church, but in, it wasn't until age 46 that I committed to the Catholic Church. In Fairfax County, Virginia in 1824, William Henry Fitzhugh, who had been taking care of me and helping my mother almost my entire life, convinced me to apply for a scholarship to West Point. In the end, he did convince me, and I did personally hand the letter in to the Secretary of War, John C. Calhoun, who got me in, and, but due to high enrollment, I was not able to attend until the summer of next year. So, in the summer of 1825, I attended West Point. At the time, the largest major was engineering, so, of course, that's what I did. I graduated, not in the top of my class, sadly, but second in my class. The person who did beat me, and the, who was the top of my class, ended up quitting the United States military one year after graduation. After graduating, I went back to Ravensworth, Virginia to see my mom, but I found her on her deathbed, and I saw her die while I was there. It was a very traumatic experience for me. In that same summer, I met the love of my life, Mary Curtis. She was a lovely lady, but, I mean, she ought to be because she was a direct descendant, the great-granddaughter of Martha Washington. Two years later, in Arlington, Virginia, June 30th, 1831, I did marry Mary Curtis. It was a lovely wedding. In Washington, D.C., in 1834, I worked for General Gradiot as his assistant. Then, between 1832 and 1846, me and Mary had seven children. George, Mary, William, Anne, Eleanor, Robert, and Mildred. Right after that, I went to the Mexican-American War, where I met Winfield Scott, worked alongside of him, and he considered me his best aide. Also, for the first time, which I didn't know I would ever meet again, I met Ulysses S. Grant. Between 1852 and 1855, I went back to West Point, but this time now as a student, as the superintendent. During that period, my son did graduate from there, and unlike me, he graduated in the top of his class, which made me very proud. In 1855, I did not have a good year. Finally, I got promoted, which I was expecting for a long time. They sent me to Texas to help protect the Texans from the Cherokee. In Arlington, Virginia, in 1857, I went back to see my father-in-law dead. And because of this, I had to save my plantation, which I did. March 28th, 1861, I, met, uh, I got a promotion, and I accepted. 
Later, in April 18, 1861, another man, Francis P. Blair, asked me for promotion, but I declined. Two days after that, I res uh, resigned from the Union Army, which I did because, well, I wasn't willing to hurt the South. Three days after that, I went to Jefferson Davis, and I talked to him, and, well, he gave me a job as one of the generals. Very nice of him. Uh, he was very pleased because a month earlier, the Confederates had asked me for a job, but I had declined. The first major battle I was in was on the Battle of Cheat Mountain, which I led. It was September 15th, 1861, which was a horrible defeat because I had large numbers and still lost. Throughout my time in the military, I was criticized for that and got the na uh, nickname Granny Lee. There was also the Seven Days Battle, which, well, tilted in my favor at the very end because of my st strategy, which at the time was developing very nicely. Soon after that, Lincoln, the President of the United States, created the Emancipation Proclamation, freeing all slaves. That was a doozy for me. So of course, though, the slaves loved it. Well, the Battle of Fredericksburg, December 13, 1862. It was a terrible battle because both sides lost so many people, but the South prevailed with only 5,000 casualties compared to the Union's 12,000 casualties. One of the most well-known battles in history, the Battle of Gettysburg, in 1863. It was terrible. So many men lost. So many died, both Confederate and Union. It's horrible to think of those days. <sighs> in total, 48,000 casualties on that day from both sides. August 8, 1863. I tried to resign from the Confederacy, but Jefferson Davis declined, so I continued. Yet again, I was promoted to the Chief General of the Confederate Army. I agreed, even though we were not doing good at the time. January 9, 1865, at Appomattox Courthouse, I met with Ulysses S. Grant, and I made a surrender. It was a very sad experience for me, and I still can't believe I lost the war. Lexington, Virginia, October 1865. I became the president of Washington College. <laughs> I did not believe I would only be the president of Washington College, but that's how it turned out. Later in Lexington, Virginia, October 12, 1870, I passed away. Thanks for watching. That's my life.